I want to thank Sergio and Ashvin, of course, for the invite and Liz and John for moderating the session. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the basics of doing goniotomy. I thought the video that we just saw gives you a great idea of some of the range of devices that we have. Uh, we tend to use Zen a little bit later in the course of treatment, and I'll talk about something we use a little bit earlier in the course of treatment. Just by way of introduction, I love talking about a couple of things whenever I talk about MIGS, and that's the fact that the most uh, astonishing thing to me is this slide is what we used to have when I was a fellow and a resident. We would go from drops to laser to trabeculectomy without much in between, but now we have this entire range of devices and different methods for treating patients between drops, laser, and going to trabeculectomy. And now what we're struggling with is trying to pick which device would work best in which patient. So we need more data. I'm going to talk about the basics and then I'll talk about the data a little bit. So incisional goniotomy is what we think of when we mention the word goniotomy. This is introduced decades ago by Barkan, who first used a gonioscopy, a gonioscopy lens to look at the angle prior to doing an incisional cut of the trabecular meshwork. This, of course, was through an ab interno approach but it produced two leaflets that would often, especially in adults, scar back together and negate the efficacy of the procedure itself. So this is why we came up with doing an excisional goniotomy instead. I'm gonna go over this just in basic terms and I'm gonna try and use my arrow here. Hopefully you can see that in, in picture one, the tip of the device goes into the trabecular meshwork and then the key to the entire procedure is this ramp that elevates the trabecular meshwork up the ramp and towards these two blades the two blades then create parallel incisions, which allows you to excise a strip of trabecular meshwork. We started off in 2013 doing some basic studies comparing an MVR blade, basically an incisional goniotomy, to the dual blade goniotomy. And what you can see here from our first paper is not just an incision without removal of the leaflets, but also injury to the scleral wall. Whereas with the dual blade device, we don't have the leaflets remaining. And of course, it's a safe procedure because of the foot plate on the on the back side of the device. So here's my friend V. John Berdahl doing a case of KDB. I think this is his first case. You see he does have a little bit of shakes here, but that's his baseline, has nothing to do with the device. You can see going from left to right, creating this partial excision of the trabecular meshwork, and then from right to left. And I'm gonna play this bottom video at the same time while you're watching the end. He basically goes in with duet forceps to remove the strip. But I would encourage everybody doing MIGS or angle-based surgery to do this fluid wave at the end of the procedure. You can see up on this side of the video, the wave that removes the blood from the vessels. And that tells you that you've successfully unroofed the canal. And I often tell patients that I've seen success in what I tried to do. And now we can wait and see if the eye wants to lower pressure, but we've done our job for unroofing the canal. This is Paul Singh doing the procedure from right to left and then switching from left to right, just to give you an idea of how long this takes. And the skill set really <clears throat> is in the gonioscopy part of it, recognizing the anatomy, but much of the motion is stuff that we're, we're familiar with as anterior segment surgeons. So who's a good candidate when you're doing your first cases? You want somebody who's cooperative, you want a good view, you want to make sure you can see the anatomy and one trick is to use tripan blue to stain the trabecular meshwork. You can see that in the bottom right hand corner here. And then you can pretty much treat any stage of glaucoma from mild to severe and most forms of glaucoma that I'll go over here in a little bit. You do, however, want to avoid treating patients with active neovascular glaucoma or active uveitic glaucoma, patients with elevated episcleral venous pressure, poor angle view, and if the goal pressure is 10 or under, you're looking for something different like a trap or a tube to get you there. All right, so let's talk about clinical data here before wrapping it up. Uh, one of the things that we need to do more of in the MIGS or angle spaces is, is get more data. This is a prospective 12 month um, study done in seven centers looking at higher and lower IOP and an average of the two. And what we see here is no matter where you start, so the high pressure 20.5, low pressure 13.1, and then the average of 16.8, they all end up around the same of 12 millimeters of mercury. And the adverse event profile is very, very low. The point here is you can get pressures to just about episcleral venous pressure if you excise about four clock hours of trabecular meshwork. Next study is just to show longer term follow up. This is the only one that's public, I believe, at this point with 30 months, but we're out to four years in our data set showing that 69% maintain greater than 20% IOP reduction. 85% had uh, a decrease in their drops by one or more at the conclusion of the follow up in this case. 
If you don't remember anything else from this talk, remember this slide. Angle closure glaucoma is one of the perfect subgroups of patients that respond to goniotomy. You can see our pressure 25 to 13 drops from 2.3 to 0.14. If I have a chronic angle closure glaucoma patient, I'm thinking excisional goniotomy all the way, and you can see the data here support that. And I'll close off with one study here before a couple of, um, of points from our practice. In mild to moderate glaucoma with phaco emulsification, head to head prospectively, eye stent versus KDB. This paper just got published in JCRS. The primary outcome was pressure reduction greater than 20% or IOP reduction, uh, IOP medication reduction of one or greater of their medication bottles. 164 eyes, where 83.7% of the KDB phaco group met their primary outcome, 83.3% of the eye stent phaco group met the primary outcome. And you can see on the bottom right-hand side, as far as pressure equal to or less than 18, the excisional goniotomy patients come on top with a higher percentage of success. So this shows that significantly more KDB or excisional goniotomy eyes compared to eye stent bypass eyes can achieve success. And I think we need more of these studies. We need more of these head-to-head -head studies in MIGS. So I'm not gonna go over all the details here. It's just to say that we have a lot of studies, about 30 studies right now with excisional goniotomy showing success. And I wanna close off with an academic thing. If you like looking at trabecular mesh work and trying to figure out what's happening with glaucoma, this is one of the rewards that we have from doing excisional goniotomy. We can take the trabecular mesh work and we can see what different devices are doing in the angle. We can see the pathophysiology of glaucoma in a way that we couldn't before. This is a case of an eye stent that I had done two years prior. I noticed that there was a film growing over the eye stent, pushing it down. So we went in, removed the eye stent, and this is just me doing an excisional goniotomy. And towards the end, I can feel this resistance. And you can see a film that was actually growing over the device. And I'll point that out here, right there. You can see the film to the right-hand side. Um, so we collected the tissue and we took it to the lab to do histology to make sure that we weren't missing something as far as what the pathophysiology was. And we published this in Journal of Glaucoma in 2018, just a couple of years ago, showing that all of the tissue, especially the trabecular meshwork around the implant, showed fibrotic tissue, loss of trabecular meshwork, loss of uh, pigmentation. And this was consistent across all of the devices. We've done a couple of dozen of these to date, and we see exactly the same thing with each one. So there's something happening at the level of the angle when we put things in there that might be similar to what we see when we put a glaucoma drainage device under TNOS, just this encapsulation fibrotic tissue. And I think stay tuned, we're still doing more studies on this. In conclusion, uh, excisional goniotomy allows you to uh, excise tissue and expose multiple collector channels. No foreign body left behind and you still have the opportunity to do conjunctiva-based surgery like trabeculectomy or glaucoma drainage devices. Implant-free to me is key. I try and do that as much as I can. It can be performed in combination with cataract surgery or standalone, mild to moderate to end stage, open angle, closed angle, primary or secondary, uveitic, or even chronic angle closure glaucoma, like I said, which is one of the sweet spots for this procedure. And now we're back like clinical data up to four years of follow-up with prospective head-to-head -head versus other angle devices, which is what I'm hoping to see more and more of as time goes by. I just wanna leave you with a couple of links. This is my email address if you wanna email me. A free wiki for educational materials, keogt.com. And then this is my YouTube channel. So if you wanna see the videos from this talk or other videos, please feel free to visit. Thanks guys. Dr. Kahook, thank you so much. That was so fantastic.